Ever since the Mac Studio launched back in March, I have had my poor trusty iMac Pro sitting in a corner collecting dust. But today, as I was getting ready to list this thing on eBay and sell it, I noticed that the prices on these guys are becoming crazy cheap. So much so that I actually think this might be one of the best deals in Apple computing right now. And today, I'm gonna tell you why. So make sure to get subscribed, leave a like down below, and let's get into it. Today I'm excited to partner with today's sponsor, Omaze, to offer you guys the chance to win an incredible unplugged Tesla S Apex Plaid, as well as support a great cause, the Juju Foundation. Omaze is a sweepstakes experience that gives you guys a chance to win amazing prizes while also donating over $27 million to charity last year. In this experience, the S Apex Plaid offers a stunning upgrade to the factory Tesla Model S, featuring a carbon fiber wide body kit, 21 inch UPO3 wheels, carbon ceramic brakes, a custom cognac leather interior, and much more. It's really the ultimate version of the fastest production car in the world. Plus, your entries benefit the Juju Foundation, which supports youth causes through grants to nonprofits across the country. To enter for your chance to win, you can head to the link in the description below, omaze.com slash lukemiani, and your donations will support a great cause. So, check out the link in the description below, and now let's get back to the video. Okay, so first off, you might be thinking, Luke, it looks like every other iMac except it's gray and it has a little bit of extra zest on the insides and it's five years old. Why are we talking about this now? Well, as is true with a lot of things in the tech world, it doesn't have to be the latest, the greatest, the shiniest and the newest in order to be really, really good. Price is more a determinant of how good a product is than you might think. And these are priced really well right now. So the first thing that we have to consider is that right now, the mid-range Apple market is a little sparse. In the $2,000 to $6,000 range, you could either spec up a 16-inch MacBook Pro or you've got the Mac Studio. That's it. There's no more 27 inch iMac, which was for a very long time, a key tool for creative professionals. The poor old Mac Studio is doing all the heavy lifting here. From anyone who needs a desktop that's just a little bit more powerful than a Mac mini, all the way up to people that are replacing a 2019 Mac Pro, the Mac Studio is doing all of that. But I think we should revisit the iMac Pro. It might be old, it might be Intel, it's not the most exciting headline worthy device anymore, but it's really, really freaking good. I bought mine in December of 2019 and I used it until March of this year. So this guy was probably the best investment I have ever made. I bought it for $5,500 back then and now you can get them a lot cheaper. And that makes things really, really interesting. Number one, the display is virtually identical to the studio display. So not only are you getting a computer, like a Mac Studio, you're also getting a studio display. So already, that is a huge point in its favor. But of course, it's not just the display panel that makes all the difference. This thing, like the studio display, has a 1080p webcam, as well as built-in microphone and speakers. However, the studio display has been ragged on quite a bit for having not very good camera quality. This has fantastic camera quality. So here's a test of the studio display camera and microphones. The camera has been criticized quite a bit and that's perhaps understandable when we look at the five-year-old iMac Pro, which looks like this. Yeah, it, it's a lot better. Now, to my ear, I can't really tell a difference in the microphone quality. If you can, let me know in the comments below. But yeah, this camera is just objectively better in every way. And it's not just that. The speakers on the iMac Pro, in my opinion, are actually a little bit better, or at least very comparable to those that you get in the studio display. Have a listen.
So right off the bat, before we even talk about the computer part of this machine, you've got a display that is arguably as good or better than the studio display. And so when you consider that you can find some of the lower end configurations of this iMac Pro for as little as $2,000, all of a sudden you're like, oh, now wait a minute, but my iMac Pro is not a base model. This one is completely decked out to the gills. We've got the 18 core Xeon. We've got 128 gigabytes of RAM. We've got two terabytes of storage, and we've got the Vega 64 graphics card with 16 gigabytes of VRAM. And you can get these things now for $3,000 to $4,000. That is pretty crazy because that means that this thing is less than even the cheapest version of the M1 Ultra Max Studio. So when you look at it like that, it does make a lot of sense. The argument for the iMac Pro is very, very strong. And yeah, I'm not gonna try to argue to you that this thing is more powerful than a Mac Studio because in many cases it just isn't. But it doesn't necessarily have to be faster to be better. So how close does the iMac Pro get to an M1 Ultra? Well, it's gonna depend dramatically on what you're trying to do with this thing. So for example, if you run Cinebench, the M1 Ultra absolutely demolishes it. The 18 core Xeon is much closer to an M1 Max than it is to an M1 Ultra. And in many practical applications, such as Final Cut Pro, we can see that the gulf opens up dramatically because of Apple Silicon's optimization. For the M1 Ultra 64 core, it takes just 11 minutes and 18 seconds to render two 4K 60 FPS 30 minute clips compared to over 34 minutes on the iMac Pro. And exporting it, well, that's even more ridiculous. Three minutes on the M1 Ultra, 35 on the iMac Pro. That's like ludicrously different. But things aren't always like that. If you fire up Octane X and do the teapot render target, there we see about four minutes on the M1 Ultra and a little over seven on the iMac Pro a much smaller gap. And if you fire up Blender, which works much better on x86 than it does on Apple Silicon at the moment, you'll see that it takes 278 seconds to go through the Blender Classroom target versus 231 on the Mac Studio. That's not a huge gain. You're only talking about 40 seconds here. Using the GPU for this render shows us that we're saving about 32 seconds compared to the iMac Pro. And in the BMW render, that's down to about 20 seconds. So you can clearly see that depending on what you're doing, Apple Silicon has some areas like video editing where it really shines. But in other areas, x86 and its compatibility just have some advantages. And also you'll notice that I was comparing this guy to the 64 core M1 Ultra. So if you actually compare the total package, it's not really an even shootout. Obviously it's impressive that the M1 Ultra, which is a $5,000 machine now, can beat this, which was a $12,000 machine. That of course is no small feat, but we have to remember that right now you can buy this for about $3,700. But if you wanna build the Mac Studio out to match this thing with the display, the keyboard, the mouse, all of that stuff, well, we start with $4,999. And by the way, that's for one terabyte of storage where this has two. We're gonna go ahead and add $1,599 to that. And then you can go ahead and add $199 for the keyboard and $99 for the mouse. And that gives you a grand total of $6,896 versus $3,700. So, is the M1 Ultra faster? Yes. Dramatically faster? Also yes, depending on what you're gonna do. But, you're talking about a system here that can be about half the price. That is extremely valuable. I mean, if you wanted to actually match the price point of the iMac Pro, you would have to get the base model Mac Studio and the Studio Display, and you can start to see how, if you actually want to get a high-end Mac for $3,500 or even $4,000 all in, it's not an easy task. And when you compare this to the M1 Max Mac Studio, the base model, 
things are a lot more favorable for the iMac Pro. In Cinebench R23 this time, the iMac Pro is faster than the Mac Studio. And in Octane X Teapot, the iMac Pro is again a little bit faster. We see this popping up again in Blender. The base model Mac Studio takes significantly longer to do a render. And in the GPU test, it's actually a few seconds slower there as well. Now granted, in video editing, which is the sweet spot for Apple Silicon, it's still gonna absolutely smoke it. But that's also in large part due to the fact that the M1 Max Mac Studio is only a few seconds slower than the fully decked out M1 Ultra. So that in itself is a whole can of worms that we don't have to get into. But you can see here that the iMac Pro actually represents a really compelling price point right now. The fact that you can get these uh, mid-range ones with the 10 or the 14 core GPU for as low as two grand, that is a phenomenal value. And I hope that more people who are a little bit off put by where Apple Silicon is on the high end right now will turn to these things and say, hey, I can make this work. This fits my budget and it's a good, it's a good compromise between being powerful enough, but also being significantly more affordable and a more complete package without having to tack on thousands of extra dollars in, in order to match it. So I'm curious to know what you guys think. Would you buy an iMac Pro in 2022? Let me know in the comments down below. And of course, make sure to like, comment, and get subscribed so you don't miss any future videos. And with that, I will see you guys in the next one. Thank you.